We've been thinking about grinding our own grains for a while, and with what's going on in the world today, we figured it was a good time to start. So I contacted Vivor about getting one of their grain grinders, and they actually sent it to me. And in the meantime, I went on their website and I bought one of these shelf set. Looked like it would be good for it. It's a food grade um, shelf, and it has a capacity, it says, to hold it. A little bit thin material you can see there, but uh, went together easy, came with good instructions. And uh, once, uh, once I got it put together, it actually was pretty sturdy, so I think it'll be good for the machine. We'll see in a couple minutes exactly what it, you know, how it worked out. But you know, that was a really good option to put it on, I think. Um, okay, machine came. Uh, Vivor sent this to me, uh, no cost to me. I requested it, and they said, sure. So you can see it arrived in a wooden crate, really uh, packed good. FedEx guy said it was a little bit heavy for FedEx. It was like 140 pounds. And um, I'm going to just open it up here. And I did notice um, right off, okay, it comes with an, without a plug on it. We'll get into that later. But I did notice right off that there was a dent in the top corner of the um, machine there. And there was no sign of damage on the crate. And no sign of being hit so it looks like that might have just been a manufacturing um, quality issue but it still doesn't affect the machine so I'm not really going to worry about it um, and you can see it was really packaged well in the um, in the wood crate with the foam around it but it was quite heavy so you're going to need a couple people to get this unpacked um, I think the machine itself without the accessories or the crate is over 100 pounds and with the crate, it was like uh, close to 140. And it does have some switches and stuff on there. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, that's how it comes packed. And, you know, really packed well. And it does look really nice. I uh, got it on that stand and it fit perfectly. Really good to stand. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to push on it, knock it over or anything. But it looks like it's going to work really good. And I was afraid it might bend, but nope. It seems like the top is reinforced. Now this is a grain grinder that's 300 watts, 110 volts. That's why it didn't come with a plug on it. Because it's going to require a special plug-in outlet. And it does come with a push button uh, switch and EMO switch there. And again, that, that little thing there in the corner looks like it was manufacturing. Because there's no sign of damage to it. So... I guess, you know, that's a chance you take. Um, it came with two plates installed and two, four extra grinding plates, and they're both double-sided. Uh, brushes for cleaning and a scoop for the grain and a, a, a thing to put on the bottom to help with the dust and instructions. Now let's just open it up and look inside for the first look. And this, I think they call it a burr type grinder. There's a bearing there, and then there are two grinding plates that get pushed together to control the grind. And the spiral thing there actually is a crusher for the grain. It goes through that first. A little spring there to keep the plates from touching. And it really looks like, you know, a pretty simple thing. But this thing has a rating of, uh, you know... A lot of grain per hour it, it can pass a lot of grain through it with the you know amount of amp or watts that it uses and there also is a little slide there to control how fast the hopper feeds the grain into it and we'll I'll show you all this work in a little while now it does come with a plug on it it's only a number 12 gauge cord which is I think is a little bit light but you know no plug so I ordered one online in the meantime, I needed some storage for my my grains, and I found out that these uh, gamma sealed lids are supposed to be pretty good for long-term storage. Um, I had some food-grade buckets, so I just ordered a couple of lids, and they do have double O-rings in them. You can see one where it hits the container, and one where the top seals. Now I put the lids in the sun and I put the white buckets in the cold air conditioned house and then brought them out and they snap together pretty easy that way. So I think it helps expand the um, black lids a little bit. But there you can see they fit perfect and supposed to be um, able to store grain for years without it going bad as long as it's on ground. So this is going to be a, you know, it's going to be a fun project that, you know, should last for a long time. 
I got my buckets ready, and then I went on Amazon, and I actually ordered a 25-pound bag of organic uh, dent corn. And some. I went up to my Amish store, actually found some wheat berries, some gold, prairie gold, they called it. Now, they ordered some uh, wheat berries from Amazon, and these were really overpriced, but I needed something to start with. So those are some hard white wheat berries, and then there's some hard red winter wheat berries, too. So let's see. Uh, first thing I figured I'd see is if 25 pounds of corn fits in a bucket. So that's about what I was figuring on storing in each bucket. And I'll be, I'll be adding more buckets over time. Because these grains are supposed to last for years if you don't grind them. And there it is. You could probably get about, I'm saying, I'm going to say 30 pounds of corn in that bucket. 25 pounds fits comfortably. Now, in the meantime, the um, power plug came. I ordered from Amazon. And this is just a 30 amp, 110 volt AC. Uh, it's a standard RV plug that they use on RVs. And that fit on there good. Got that on, and I ran to Costco, and I grabbed a bag of $13 rice, long grain rice, to make flour of. And also, I'm going to use this for the initial cleaning of the machine after I wash it. And again, 25 pounds of rice fits right in a bucket nicely. All right, so here we are set up outside and getting ready to go. I made some labels for the buckets. I did order some sifting screens, and um, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to... Let's do my first grinding today. I did wash the machine. I took it apart, washed it good with soapy water and um, with Dawn. And I'm going to be running it off my generator today because I haven't installed an outlet for it yet. I've got to figure out where I want it. But I will tell you that it's going to be best to use a machine like this outside. Okay, first up, I'm going to grind two cups of white long grain rice. And turn the machine on. I've got it set not quite really fine, but you know, a little fine. I'm going to just let a little bit through at a time. And if you open that gate valve all the way up, this thing will grind in, you know, probably about three seconds. It'll grind to two cups. So it's fast. It's meant to be a commercial machine. And hopefully it'll last. Um, so there it is. A little bit um, coarse, but you can see it did a, a beautiful job on it. So let's put it through a screen. Um, I bought number 40 mesh and number 50 mesh screens. Um, I guess anywhere, you know, as long as it's 40, it should be okay to use. And then I can sift out 50 mesh for fine flour, from what I understand. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to run it through the 40 mesh screen. And uh, most of it, most of it went through. Um, you can see there's a little bit, a little bit left there that didn't quite go through. But I didn't have it adjusted too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through again. And that's a good thing about this machine. You can run it regrind to get it finer. And I'm going to adjust the plates a little bit closer together. And uh, this is something you're going to have to play with. Because you don't want to go too close. Because uh, your plates will hit and destroy each other. And you'll have metal in your in your flour so it's, you know you have to be real careful with this and I do have to put some markings on there now that I kind of know where it goes but you can see I ran that through the second time you can see the amount of dust so you know that's one of the reasons you're probably going to want to do this outside all right so I'm just going to take this now and this is a number 50 screen that'll give you a real fine flour from what I understand and um I gotta say, you know, a good deal of it would go through the, the number 50, but um, basically that's what number 50 looks like. It's a real fine grain. You can see it's just like a dust. So that's, you know, I can get between number 40 and 50, and I'm just gonna sieve it all at number 50 in case there's any big pieces left there. And there you can see that's my first uh, my first rice flour. Pretty amazing how how nice this thing works. So I started with one two cups of rice and I wound up with three cups of flour. So what I'm going to do now is just go back and um, grind up another another little half well, a little less than a cup of rice. There 
and again I adjusted a little bit coarser for the first one you're supposed to do two grinds on this from what I understand and I'm just learning here so you know it's going to take some time till I figure it all out and I definitely have to get um, bigger screens for the, the number 50 there but there you can see I did get you know some number number 50 out of it which is a very fine rice and um, so now I've got the rice done I, I got my four cups and I'm going to clean the machine now this is something where you don't want to cross contaminate when you're going from like rice to wheat and wheat to corn and corn to wheat stuff like that so and this is kind of going to take a while to do you just have to they give you the brushes to brush it out and um, when you grind it really fine they don't quite get all the little stuff out I found out so I, I pulled out my um, compressor and air hose and I'm going to use a blow gun because there's like a grain stuck in the um, that first grinder that spiral on there and stuff so I'm going to use a grinder to try to get or the air hose to try to get what I can out and this is where you want to make sure you have a wind to your back um, or have a fan running so you don't get hit with any of this stuff or have a mask on because um, it's really nasty to find powder so you can see I did you know this air hose does make a mess but I actually got it really clean you know so the, from the most part so there wouldn't be contamination and even those grinding plates is tough to get all the fine dust out of when you're switching so um, I don't think this is the recommended method but that's how I did it and I was real happy with the results and just a little bit of you know going over with the wire brush for a couple pieces that were stuck in there and I was able to get it you know cleaned up pretty good and you know I could switch over to another grain now without having to worry about contamination which for the most part I really you know don't worry about it but you never know if there's some allergies involved or something you want to try to you know really clean it out good all right so we got her all all cleaned up there wipe it I've got a microfiber cloth here I'm gonna wipe it down with for the kitchen we take them we wash the new ones first to get the lint off of them and then they work good for you know getting dust and stuff like this off so I'll give it one fine one fine wipe it down there and ready to um, to switch over and actually try some wheat berries let's put that closed and just uh, tighten that up and clean out the top a little bit again everything does get quite dusty so you know the biggest thing is uh, clean up and that's really why I think I'm gonna make this so I can roll it outside the back door the basement door and just work outside with it whenever I want to do it um, and just like you know grind five pounds of flour at a time once you grind the flour it's only good for a couple of weeks but if you keep the berries on ground you're good for years so here's white white wheat berries it will we're going to grind these are the hard wheat berries we're going to grind next to try and i'm going to go a little bit over two cups in that thing just about full see how much you know flour i wind up with and again those buckets really work good so there it is uh, there's what the wheat berries look like and i backed it off a little bit coarser for the first grind let's start it up and let them go through so I'm only gonna just oop, a little bit of dust in there I'm only gonna just crack that a little bit to start out with if you pull that all the way open you've got a dusty mess real quick when you're grinding fine I mean for like cracking corn for pigs or something like that you can let this thing run wide open but you know for fine flowers um, you want to control it a little bit okay so a little bit coarser grind through the first time and I'm gonna just put that back in I'm gonna crank it down a little bit and I think I'm pretty much knowing where this should be and it kind of has a little click every time you turn it so I'm getting this figured out a little bit at a time and again you can see just how fast that grain goes through there 
and that's not even wide open flow. This is a powerful monster. Um, and there you can see there's my wheat grain. And I decided to do just one more finer because um, I found in it between uh, number 40 and number 50 for bread. She could use uh, 40 for bread and 50 for other things. So I'm just going to, you know, try to hit about 50-50 and we can sift it out later. Still a learning experience for us. And there you can see that's a really nice, nice fine grind. Really beautiful whole wheat flour. So I'm going to run this through the number 40 screen again. I know a lot of it is finer than that. And you can see how fast it's going through. But again, dust is made when you're, you know, messing with this stuff. And um, what's left in the screen there, I think, is the actual brand. Um, I've got to do a little more research on that. But it looks like you, um, the brand, that, the covering that's removed from the wheat is the brand. And that doesn't grind up good. So that just gets spit out. And again, you can see um, that's the number 40 mesh. And everything goes right through it, no problem. I was a little, little wondering about this at first, how fine it would go. But, um, you know, once you get it fine-tuned and you figure out where the plates go and you make sure they don't touch, it's really um, pretty amazing. So I got all that sifted, and there you go. There's um, white wheat flour there. Came out beautiful. And I wound up getting almost four cups out of a little over, you know, two cups of grain. And I wound up getting some bran that I'm going to save, too. My wife said that might be useful. So at this point, I'm going to start cleaning up to switch over to the red wheat berries. But I'm going to have to end this um, video here abruptly and pick it up in another video. Um, my wife started having some severe health issues all of a sudden. I uh, started having chest pains and um, shortness of breath. And she was kind of blacking out. So um, I just had to drop everything at this point. Uh, load her in my truck and head down to the ER. Um, Luckily, we got there in about five minutes, and she's all finally all checked in, and, you know, I'll do an update once we have some more information on how she is, and um, I'll finish up this video with all the other grains that I've got. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.